Good evening. I call to order the Maplewood City Council meeting on Tuesday, October 12th, 2021. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, 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 States of America and to the and Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk, please conduct a roll call to ascertain quorum. Councilmember Crosley. Here. Councilmember Falkingham. Here. Mayor Knapper. Present. Councilmember Page. Here. Councilmember Phillips. Here. Councilmember Schmidt. Here. Councilmember Wood. Here. Madam Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, there is no need to address item number four, which is motion to excuse council person. Item number five, attorney Graves. Thank you, Mayor. I would request that the um, minutes of this meeting reflect that under section 610.015 of the Missouri Sunshine Law, the council can participate and vote even though council members are not in chambers this evening because we remain in the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number six. Approval of the council agenda. May I have a motion? Motion to approve the council agenda. Second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, item number seven is the public forum. At this time, uh, the public is invited to provide uh, any comment that they would like. Um, all you need to do is raise your Zoom hand and then we will call upon you. Okay. Ms. Sirwala? Thank you. I'm Sheila Suterwala. Mm -hmm. Speaking as a resident of Maplewood, I just watched the entire work session and I do have some questions and comments. I will do my very best to be brief, honest, and respectful. City council members, whatever your agenda or intentions are, I call to you to look at the optics. These council meetings are recorded. They're on YouTube for a wide audience to watch. Councilman, council member Schmidt had asked about an additional task on the work session issue of appointment by the charter, by the mayor, stated this has been practiced for 40 years. Our mayor referred to it as perhaps granular. Optic wise, perhaps it looks like micromanaging. Again, I will be honest and try to be respectful as I can as a community member. I was encouraged, slightly encouraged when this city council started to delve into the issues <clears throat> of equity and inclusion. However, I feel like those words are being tossed around at a nauseating level. Equity and inclusion, well, what does that mean? For board appointments, for commission appointments, this is a volunteer position. You say you want diversity, you say you want inclusion, you say you want the disenfranchised to have a voice. As a woman of color, I will speak from my own experience. People of certain identities, especially if they have intersectional identities, would rather keep a low profile and not be discussed by city council members who perhaps have never met them. And my last position, my last comment, for the council 
to perhaps consider besides please look at what the optics may look like when we have our first African-American, our first black female mayor, and there is opposition at every single city council member meeting. I invite you to maybe take some time and look at and discuss in detail and have that honest and perhaps uncomfortable conversation. I try to watch the city council meetings. I try to participate when I can. And if I can't, I watch them on YouTube to the extent that I can tolerate, but I certainly read the minutes. In the last minutes, it was mentioned in the mayor's report that yet another woman of color resigned from boards and commissions. Why? That is the question to look at when if you want to talk about equity and inclusion, whether I support Mayor Knapper or not, the optics have a very clear message of opposition. I'm really disappointed that a whole work session was taken to discuss what every single other mayor has had. You say you started the discussion in November during the previous administration, but you failed to act on it until this person became mayor. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be blunt and to be honest. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Reese, do we have any additional um, hands for public comment? Yes, um, we have Ms. Roos. Did, did I pronounce that correctly? You did, yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yes. So I uh, was one of the original people last year asking the council to reconsider the boards and commissions process. Uh, I attend city council meetings pretty frequently and was, uh, I just felt like the way that it had been done for a long time and um, particularly in the last few years, I noticed I knew people who had applied for boards and commissions under the old way and it they just seemed to get passed up and they got no response from the city or the council or the mayor. And so I, along with several other citizens went to the council during public session and I said, hey, can you guys please reevaluate this? And I really appreciated the fact that the council did reevaluate that last year and used a completely new system last year. I think it's important to note that the system was used previously. This isn't, um, so the work session tonight, in my opinion, went largely back to what we had done, like what the council did last year. And I think that, um, you know, I don't think it's a fair characterization to say that um, this is a completely brand new process that's only being aimed at our new mayor. I think that, um, you know, I thought that in watching tonight's work session that there, you know, clearly people are, have like their own frustrations, but that the council seemed to come to an amicable uh, compromise uh, about what that process is gonna look like going forward and that it doesn't really look that different from the last process under a different mayor. So, um, you know, I can appreciate that everybody is coming with their own points, but I really, um, I hope that the process going forward now that it's set in stone will just continue to improve every year um, rather than just, uh, and, be, and be really consistent for, for citizens so that a wide variety of people can continue to participate in boards and commissions. And that's all, thanks. Thank you. 
Mr. Reese, any other hands? No, Mayor, um, no more hands are showing, thank you. All right. Madam Clerk, item number eight. Announcement. Um, I would like to make an announcement. Um, uh, congratulations to Karen Scheidt for being honored at the Mid-County Chamber Awards Dinner for being Business Person of the Year. And congrats to Jason Watkins for receiving the Chamber Citizen of the Year Award and to Jordan Will Williman as Educator of the Year. Any additional announcements? All right, hearing none, then I will move on. Madam Clerk, item number nine. Approval of the September 28, 2021 City Council meeting minutes and closed session minutes. May I have a motion? Motion to approve the September 28, 2021 City Council meeting minutes and closed session minutes. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Madam Clerk, item number 10. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri to accept the bid of Foster's Concrete in the amount of $69,686.76 for sidewalk replacement within income eligible areas of the city using community development block grant funds and capital improvement funds. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please conduct a roll call vote. Council Member Crosley. Yes. Councilmember Falkingham? Yes. Mayor Canapa? Yes. Councilmember Page? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Schmidt? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Resolution 21 45 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 11. <clears throat> Bill 6173 an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, amending chapter 34 offenses to add a new article 11, residential landlord tenants. That was the first reading, may I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All right, I have some questions and some of my questions I think may be directed towards attorney Crave. All right, so I, I noticed um, in, in the ordinance that a landlord cannot turn off utilities uh, except for like safety reasons or an emergency. And my question, Jackie, is like, um, is there, are, are we permitted to require a landlord to get a court order to turn off um, utilities? It, Mayor, it's already the law in the state of Missouri that a landlord can't turn off the utilities. Um, the rect, in order to rectify that at this time, there, um, the tenant could uh, civilly go to court um, and try to get a civil, um, remedy against their landlord, but there's not currently a criminal penalty against the landlord. So what this does is allow for a, and it's just a municipal penalty, uh, an ordinance violation. It's not a, a misdemeanor or a felony, but it allows the city to say, hey, you're not allowed to do that under Missouri law, and we're going to uh, um, criminalize that for lack of a better word. Well, I, so just help, help me, Attorney Graves, to understand. Sure. I when I read it, it said, how about this? I, I interpret it to say that if there is like a health emergency, and I, I want you to see the finger quotes, okay? The health emergency, um, 
then then they can. And so what my question is based on this, what stops a landlord from saying that there is a health emergency, they won't take the door off of the apartment complex or the apartment, um, mm -hmm. but they'll shut your water off because there is an emergency. And so I, am need, I understanding that right? It seems like it does say it, there's a part in the ordinance that says if there's yeah. an emergency, they could do that. Okay. And, and that's true under state law as well. If, if an apartment mm. building is flooding, they have to have the ability to go in and turn off the water. That's the sort of emergency that we're talking about. Okay. Or, or there's a gas leak. There's got to be the ability to go in and, and turn off that gas to get it to get for, for the health and safety of the residents. Um, it's just a stopgap measure that, to make sure that if there is an emergency like that, the land that they have to turn it off that the landlord isn't looking at a citation for that. Okay, so if a tenant says that um, their landlord effectively did an illegal eviction by turning off the water. Ooh, I'm sorry. Give me just a moment, please. All right, so, uh, thank you. Um, so the, the tenant's remedy would basically be to go to a civil court and sue and just say, and, and prove there was no valid emergency when they turned off my water. Is that it? Sure, yes. Okay. And if you're talking about the ordinance, then that would be, and say a citation was written, then that would be a defense to the citation. Okay. Basically it's, if the tenant calls the police, the landlord needs a good explanation for why, um, the water or the electric or the gas was turned off. Okay. My next question is about the penalty. Yes. Excuse me. And, and this might be um, a question for council member Schmidt or council member Crosley. I, I'm just gonna be honest. I think it's, it's low. Uh, and so I, why, why start at $100? Because I think $100 a day for some landlords is minuscule. So, so I think that just comes from the city ordinance. I don't think Lee has specified a particular, um, okay. but I, I do notice what is different. What I really liked, and so I appreciate Attorney Graves, is that you did add in language that it is a separate offense for each day, because that is not in the city's ordinance that I recall. So I think that's important, but I think you can also be sent to jail. So, I mean, you can be receive. Um, and so I think there's a discretion there. I would assume and the prosecutor has discretion and then the judge of whether to charge you up to $500. So and is that consistent with other type of civil or ordinance violations? Under the code and under state law um, yeah. for an ordinance violation, you, the city can charge up to one or the city. The fine can be imposed by the municipal court uh, up to $1,000 or up to 90 days in jail or both. So it's a it's $1,000 is the cap. There's no minimum un, under the code or state law. You could change that. And that's, you could also just um, take out the penalty provision and refer to the general section. And the general section says up to $1,000 or up to 90 days and not have anything specific to, to this code. Does the penalty section cite a uh, minimum? It currently says um, $100. Okay. Um, and the cap of 1,000 is for each unique violation, right? It's not like a, a total 1,000. It's, yes, it's for each unique violation. Okay. But what I will say, just as clarification for Council Member Schmidt as well, is each day can be considered mm -hmm. a different violation, yeah. but it requires a ticket being written each day. Okay. You can't write one ticket and say you did it for five days. So that's five violations. Okay. That's fair enough. Fair point. Yeah. Um, um, I my, am certainly open to a higher number. Just want to put that up. Yeah. I mean, I think you break the law. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, don't break the law. Thank you. That's what I'm asking for. <laughs> a higher number. Um, 
Do you have a proposed number, Mayor? Because we can make a motion to amend and then um, approve with amendments. I'd like to. I'd like for it to start at two hundred instead of one hundred, and I'd like for it to go up to a thousand. I have no issue with that. I don't need. Um, I'm good with that. Oh, good. I'm good. Okay. I'm gonna try my hand at this motion then. Um, I would like to make an emotion. A motion. Oh, sorry. Was there? Were you finished though? Were there any other questions, Mayor oh, Yapper, yeah. that might require other no. amendments? Okay. No, those. Thank you. Those. those I want to do it. Did, did anyone else have anything? No piecemeal, and I get it. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm eager. Take it away, Council Member Crosby. <laughs> All right, round two. Um, I would like to make, I am making a motion to amend um, the ordinance to reflect that the minimum violation be uh, $200 and the maximum be $1,000. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Page uh, had, had that second. I'll withdraw mine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on that one. Yes. All right. So. So is that a motion to approve the ordinance as amended? First, you've got to vote on the amendment. Okay. So we have a, a motion to amend the um, ordinance. So the so the fine will start at 200 and and the max will be a thousand. Um, we have a second, we have, okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed to the amendment? Okay, hearing none, the motion carries. So now on this, this so will be- the, We would make a motion. Now I need a motion to, approve motion the, to approve the ordinance as amended. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Second. So, that was so moved. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'll, um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now, I, here's my question: Was that was that the the first reading with that amendment, or does does that count with the amendment? Does that count well, as first reading? That's first reading. Okay, great. Thank you. Madam Clerk, second reading. Bill, <clears throat> Bill 6173, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, amending Chapter 34, Offenses, to add a new Article 11, Residential Landlord Tenant. May I have a motion? Motion to approve the ordinance as amended. Again? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? All right, thank you. The third and final reading will take place at the next council meeting. Thank you, council member Schmidt and council member Crosley for that work on the ordinance and thank you, aye. attorney Graves. <clears throat> all right. Item number 12, Madam Clerk. Bill 6174. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, granting a conditional use permit to Margaret Squires to operate a dog grooming business at 3110 Sutton Boulevard. That was the first reading. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. Madam Clerk, second reading. Bill 6174, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, granting a conditional use permit to Margaret Squires to operate a dog grooming business at 3110 Sutton Boulevard. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? I Well, I'll just say this. I, I look forward to having a um, dog grooming business on Sutton so I can take my little Noel to it. So thank you, Ms. Squire. All right, no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> All right, the third and final reading will take place at the next council meeting. Madam Clerk, item number 13. 
Bill 6171, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, amending Chapter 2, Administration, Article 7, Boards, Commissions, to create a Human Services Commission. That is the final reading. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All right, so I will, oh, did someone have a discussion? No? Okay, um, I will say that I appreciate the council uh, being open to the creation of this commission. I think that this commission will do great work for the residents of Maplewood. Um, and I also want to specifically thank uh, Amber Withicombe um, for assisting in the um, whereas section of this ordinance. So. Thank you all very much. Uh, I appreciate it. All right. If there's no further discussion, <laughs> Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Council Member Falkingham? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Phillips? Yes. Council Member Schmidt? Yes. Council Member Wood? Yes. Council Member Crosley? Yes. Ordinance 5966 is approved. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, item number 14. Bill 6172, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Maplewood, Missouri, amending Chapter 38, Personnel, Article 9, Hours of Work, Leaves of Absence, and Other Benefits, Section 38-259, to establish a policy for leave for victims of sexual or domestic violence. That was the final reading. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? This is a great, this is a great part of the order. It's great. All right. Hearing no further discussion, Madam Clerk, please conduct a roll call vote. Mayor Knapper? Yes. Council Member Page? Yes. Council Member Phillips? Yes. Council Member Schmidt? Yes. Council Member Wood? Yes. Council Member Crosley? Yes. And Council Member Falkenham? Yes. Ordinance number 5967 is approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 15. Mm -hmm. Old Business Ordinance Review Committee's update. Uh, I have, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I had just asked for this to be added so we could get an update, but it sounds like maybe you were about to provide one. Yes, so, I have an no. update. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so on, on October 27th, uh, Attorney Graves and uh, Dr. Robert Croft uh, will conduct a um, session about the ordinances that each committee is going to focus on. Um, that session will be conducted over Zoom and it'll be recorded. So if you're not able to make it uh, on the 27th, that's okay. Um, the, the recording will be emailed to each person that is volunteering on a committee. Uh, and so the reason, the reason why I wanted to have um, Dr. Croft and Attorney Graves provide just a excuse me, brief presentation is because there are some ordinances that we have that, forgive me, let me step back. So Dr. Croft is going to talk with us about how we can ensure that if we are looking to have uh, equitable, inclusive, excuse me, ordinances, he's gonna go through the steps that you wanna make sure you kind of check off when you're doing that. But then Jack, excuse me, Attorney Graves is going to um, make sure that we understand the process of changing some ordinances. So for example, uh, when I was talking to Attorney Graves about zoning, um, she let me know that there are state there are state uh, statutes that are going to govern what a, what a municipality is going to do regarding changing its ordinances. And there's a process that you're gonna to have to go through. And so I wanna make sure that everyone that's doing this work knows what that process is 
So you don't have a committee that's done a bunch of work and then they're told by attorney Graves, you know, months later, everything that you did was wrong. Um, and so again, that'll be on October 27 at 6 p.m. It'll be recorded. So if you can't make it, we will send that out to you or actually Mr. Reese will, but yes. So that's my update for that. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. The next item on old business is kids community input project update. Council member Schmidt, that may be you. Yeah, these are all me, but yes. Uh <laughs> <laughs> this one's me uh, again. I just wanted to revisit this because I admittedly dropped the ball a little bit, but um, we have that flyer ready to go. And I just wanted to visit with you all and see your thoughts. I sort of created a plan for um, how to conduct this and see if anyone had any additional thoughts or were in agreement with it. But my thought was to open the, in the period um, this Friday, October 15th and continue it through December 15th. Um, and then really try to get during this time, get the word out and ask the city if they would begin advertising it on October 15th via city me email and social email blasts, our social media blasts. Um, and then I sort of tried to pick some dates a couple weeks apart to kind of re-advertise it. So we're sort of hitting different days of the week that maybe different people will see it. Um, and then I I uh, would ask my fellow council members if you'd be willing to share it um, via your own social media or just get the word out to people you're talking to. Um, and then I need to follow up with the school. I did speak with Dr. Jamison and um, she had said she was gonna follow up with the principals, but I think like me, she probably got busy and it just didn't happen. So I was gonna follow up with her and see if she'd um, be willing to share it through the, their various sort of emails. I know each school has its own email blast. I know there's a district-wide one. I know hopefully like in the middle in the high school, they can email it directly to the students. Um, and then um, have, I also, I'm sorry. Real quick, do you have Ed Rich's email? Yeah, I just, I, I know American Apper had asked me to go through Dr. Jameson. So I was oh, trying gotcha. to okay. respect that uh, line of communication, but I'm gonna follow up with her and it maybe she just, I know he reached out to me on something else. So um, I'll let her direct me to him. But um, I also thought about recording possibly a short video that um, other people would like to participate that, teachers could share with their students to sort of give them a background about what it is and what we're looking for. Um, and then with the library, I know I, I had dropped the ball there too. So I was just gonna follow up with them and revisit that conversation and maybe see if we can, I know I spoke with Mr. Reese and I don't wanna print too many flyers because it would be cost prohibitive, but maybe if we could print out a few or I'll print them out, maybe the library would be willing to hand them out when people check out books or something like that. Um, and then um, I was still going to purchase gift cards because kids who entered are going to be entered to win. I thought maybe we could do a drawing on December 17th. Um, and then my goal would be to synthesize the information and have it presented in a report by January, since that's when we had discussed doing goal setting. Um, I, I just, for me, the goal of this project is, you know, no ways when we reach out to get community input, do we really ever ask kids what they think? And I think that, you know, we have, our kids in our community do a lot of work around what community means. Um, and so I think they have a lot of valuable insight to give us. I mean, some of them are almost adults anyway. Um, so that's really my goal is for us as a body to like get to get their perspective. And when we're setting goals, factor that in, when we're changing our ordinances, factor that in. So anyway, um, I don't know if anyone has any other ideas of um, things to add to that list or if you're good with that plan. It's great. I, I want to. I just wanted to talk with you about adding something to the list. Yeah. It's a great. It's a great list. First, before I do though, um, Dr. Jamison is is really just waiting for you to follow up with her because she actually talked to me about that, um, and she let her principals know about. Oh, the so she didn't email. copy me. She said she was going to copy me when she emailed oh, okay. them. So okay. I didn't know she emailed them. Okay. She yeah. Okay. She let them know so they know. Okay. Um, and, and then um, I just wanted to add to that is it I would like to have some type of talk like um, a kid's town hall um, what are your thoughts on that were you interested in doing that if not I can just do that so my what, my what other cast members want to do so my only concern we had talked about that before I guess my only thought if it's in a virtual setting 
because it's public, I get a little nervous about kids being in this format and anyone being, I don't know, I guess I got a little worried about like, I know their adult would be there or whatever, just the types of things that maybe like it might not be comfortable or if there were any concerns, I, I don't know. And if it's recorded in public, I, I just don't know. I mean, I just didn't know if there were any safety concerns to consider with that or anything like that. But I do think it's great if we can. I mean, my thought was maybe if we could have smaller group sessions with like a couple of council members or a mayor and a council member and kids, I don't know. Whatever people wanna do is fine with me. When you talk with Dr. Jameson, will you just bring this up to her and then she can- Oh, you mean like specific to the school setting? Yes. Oh, I thought you meant like a citywide one. No, I, so oh, yes. Oh, okay, yes. Like a smaller with just with just MRH students, not, yeah. okay, yeah, no, that's, yes. I think that maybe makes more sense. Okay, cool, thank you. All right. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilmember Schmidt, appreciate it. All right, any, any additional discussion on the Kids Community Input Project Update? They must be jumping at the bit, there they are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love you too, good night, honey. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't know that was coming. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, November 16th, 2021 Budget Town Hall out, outline and discussion. So I can pull up, uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, okay. Okay, so this should be in your, should have been your, in the packet. Um, I just put together a draft agenda, which mimics a little bit the uh, town hall that we had um, about a month and a half ago. And uh, with a welcome introduction, Try to put some time, sort of time uh, frames associated with each topic. Uh, Karen Dilbert can provide a kind of an overall budget timeline. And then we'd have breakout sessions. I allocated 20 minutes there. We could do more or less. And, um, and then uh, obviously coming out of the breakout sessions, doing a recap of those where the mayor and council members will report out. And then followed by, like we did last time, sort of open it up to the group with additional questions or comments, and then I would conclude with next steps. So um, that's just an outline for your review and input. And I guess the only thing I wanted to bring to everyone's attention, I think that we need to decide. Um, I appreciate Mr. Reese putting this together. I think this is uh, very helpful, is when we do breakout sessions, how do you want to do those? Do you want them to be just general like we did last time, or do you think uh, would you want to break it out by, you know, sort of budget subject matter? Um, I don't have a particular thought on it. So I just wanted to open that up to everyone else and see what their thoughts were. I'd like for it to be general, uh, just because I think there's an opportunity for someone to, that may be focused on one thing and to hear someone else say something and say, oh, you know what, by the way, yeah, I support that too. And I'd like to see this. Um, in addition to what that person just said. So I think when it's when it's just general, you, you may be able to get more information and more dialogue out. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Mayor Knapper that leaving it general allows people to voice their, uh, I guess their, uh, uh, not concerns, but their, uh, you know, kind of what they're, what they're tr trying to champion, uh, if you will, uh, in the budget. And we can probably get a good amount of a, uh, ideas to see where people are, where they think the priorities should be. I think probably that's going to be the biggest takeaway, but um, if we do, but if we do it by budget, one, we don't have enough council members, <laughs> uh, but uh, um, two, I think a lot of them will be really heavy uh, and others light. So uh, mixing it all together, I think is actually a, a good idea. I agree as well. I think, um, we should try to do some guiding, 
like provide some discussion questions. Um, and I think something, um, and that leads me back to my overall comment. I think what would be really helpful here um, for something as specific and as what can be challenging as a city budget is if we could do some sort of like budget education as well. So if like Karen could do like a budget overview of, you know, here's where we get our money, here's how much we've got. It, it could be high level, um, but I think that sort of um, education could be really useful and help inform the conversations um, as well. So maybe like move five minutes off the introduction to the timeline and call that like budget overview and timeline or something like that. That would be my main recommendation. It's a great idea. Yeah, okay. I really like that idea. Thank you. You can do that. Thanks for the input. I think the only other thing I wanted to note was that um, for the next steps, and I think maybe you have this there, but I think when we did the other town hall um, a couple months ago, so there was before the town hall, there was an opportunity to submit like your comments. Yes. But then after that link went away and it was only an after action survey. So I think that was a little confusing. It would be nice to maintain both, which I think is that what you're getting at there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the clarification. I'm gonna take this down now. I don't have anything else under this item. Okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number 16. Council communication. Well, I just wanted to thank everybody involved in the recent regional night out events that we had, especially the police and fire departments. Uh, they showed up for every, every place that they were supposed to be and um, they partnered with the Boardwalk waffles, ice cream and Deer Creek concessions with snow cones. And I just thought it was a really huge success. And I just wanted to thank everybody involved with that. I would like to publicly thank my wife for allowing me to spend my evening with you instead of her on this, our 19th wedding anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. It's anniversary. awesome. Anniversary. Oh thank God. you to your wife as well. Right. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mrs. Page. Yeah, thank you. My I'll convey that along. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Any additional council communication? All right, hearing none. Madam Clerk, item number 17. It's the mayor's report. Um, so this past Saturday, uh, I had the move with the mayor event and it was a success. Um, we had uh, instructors from the studios of Urban Breath Yoga Studio. Um, we had The Collective, which actually is not a yoga studio in Maplewood, but it is a um, Black-owned yoga studio that is in St. Louis, and all are welcomed. Uh, and then we also had the Complete Harmony uh, Yoga Studio, and that studio is in Maplewood, and it focuses on uh, trauma-informed yoga for our, our young children. So I appreciate everyone um, that volunteered to lead a class. I also appreciate everyone that joined. And the next um, uh, move with the mayor event is going to be getting your flu shot. Please get your flu shot. I got mine. It hurt, but you know, I'm, I'm, I survived. So get it, please. Oh, council member Wood got her flu shot too. Isn't that correct? I did, I did, yes. Yes, yes. So please, please get your flu shot. Excuse me. Um, and then there is going to be a um, scholarship run. Uh, I believe it is the Ryan Hummert scholarship run. And that is going to take place on October 23rd. And if I am incorrect on that date, then someone please correct me because I want to make sure that everyone shows up on the right date. Uh, but I believe it is October 23rd, and I will be taking part in that. So I hope that you will join us in support of that scholarship run in a memorandum of um, uh, our brave firefighter, um, Ryan Hummer. And then finally, if um, 
anyone would like to join me for coffee talks, I'm going to start having them, uh, especially now that the weather is getting cooler. And I will just post those. I'll, I'll let our city manager know. Um, and I'll also post them on my social media platforms. But if you would like to talk with me, I would like to hear from you. So be on the lookout for some upcoming coffee talks with the mayor and we can walk and talk as well. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Oh, you know what? Let me take that back. I appreciate Council Member Wood um, um, making mention of the winners of the awards at from the Mid-County Chamber of Commerce. And I wanted to spotlight uh, our, our deputy clerk, Ms. Karen Scheidt. Um, I wasn't able that evening to go over to you and congratulate you and tell you how wonderful you are. So I'm glad that I have the opportunity right now. Uh, thank you for all that you do. You do a whole lot. And I think you know this, um, but I just want you to know that I know it as well. I see it and I appreciate you. So that award was well-deserved and congratulations again. All right, now. Here, here. Oh, here, here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now that, that officially concludes my report. <laughs> Madam Clerk, item number 20. Oh, excuse me, item number 19. I don't wanna skip Mr. Reese. Uh, <laughs> did we do 18? No, you skipped it. You just skipped me. Oh my God, I skipped everybody. <laughs> no, that's not fine. That's not fine. Look at me rushing. All right. Madam Clerk, item number 18. Is the city attorney's report. I have nothing to report, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still didn't mean to skip you. All right. Thank you. All right. Madam, Madam Clerk, item number uh, 19. The city manager's report. I have nothing to report. All right, I didn't mean to skip you either, uh, Mr. Reese. All right, now, Madam Clerk, item number 20. Is a uh, public forum. Mr. Reese, do we have any hands raised? Yeah, and if people don't know, you can use the raise your hand function uh, within the Zoom client on your phone or on your web. So. Yes, forgive me. We do not have any hands raised, Mayor Kanaka. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number 21. Motion to hold a closed session. May I have a motion? Motion to hold a closed session to discuss matters relating to documents related to a negotiated contract under section 610.021 subsection 12 of the revised statutes of Missouri. Second. Any discussion? All right, I would just like to let the public know that we will not return from the closed session. Hearing no additional discussion, Madam Clerk, please conduct a roll call vote. Councilmember Page? Yes. Councilmember Phillips? Yes. Councilmember Schmidt? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Councilmember Crosley? Yes. Councilmember Falkenham? Yes. And Mayor Knapper? Yes. All right, thank you all for joining us this evening. Again, we will not return. Have a great rest of the week.